NECA gets some cues from Kenner. Here's your look at the new NECA Toys Terminator 2 Power Arm Terminator. Power Arm Terminator has many interchangeable weapon arms for battling his enemies. His spike arm can inflict heavy damage. His grabbing arm holds his foe in a crushing grip. Finally, he comes complete with a phased plasma rifle to deliver the final blow. But the first thing we do in this review is measure off how tall the Power Arm Terminator is. So taking the Ultra Metatron 5000, putting it to the very top of its head, and stopping it right there. There we go. Stop it. And reading the display here, the Ultra Metatron tells us that the figure stands 7 inches in height. We switch that over to centimeters. More than happy to oblige for those looking for centimeter measurements. 17.9, about 18 centimeters in height. Normally, I would not show you the packaging, but it is so cool. How cool it is. How cool is it? So cool, I wanted to show you guys in the review as well. This is like the old vintage Kenner packaging that NECA has scaled up. And of course, the same delivery of glued... Uh, the glued clamshell, kind of the front plastic there, exactly the same as what Kenner used to do. Even on the back, has kind of like a throwback to some of the stuff that Kenner was producing, at least package-wise. You can see the various different characters, some of which we will be, of course, having a look at in future reviews. Oh, I just gave it away. You guys already knew I was probably going to do that. And John Connor with a motorcycle. Pretty happy for that. Also a little nod to, to Kenner down below. You can see NECA is even using the same font that Kenner used to use as well. Kind of digging that. Kind of also digging the accessories that come included with the figure. For starters, he does come included with the phased plasma rifle. We've seen plasma rifles like this come usually released and included with the endoskeletons. Um, here we have the same similar, I'm certain it's the same similar mold, if not the same mold, here cast primarily in black plastic, although they have done some nice little silver accents there. Does look good. It holds fairly well into his hand. I can show you that in a second as well. Uh, he does also come with some interchangeable options. Kind of something that even Trapjaw from Masters of the Universe would be very envious of. A grabbing claw, for example. The claw, unfortunately, I guess no... It's not unfortunate, but it's unfortunate if you're not careful with it. All of these things, including the arm, which will be something of controversy that I want to talk about. But the arms, and as well as this claw, use metal screws to tighten everything that's in place. It's not pegged, it's screwed. So unfortunately, when you are moving things, initially when you get it out, you do have to apply more pressure to it than probably what you would want to apply to it, feeling as if almost you were going to break it. Needless to say, though, you can see that the pistons do work like real pistons would. And this does move in and out, and uh, these open and close, so that's pretty cool. Again, it looks like it was probably made in a black plastic. Some of the areas sort of get forgotten, but you can kind of dismiss most of it because the coloring isn't consistent across it anyways. Some areas and look looks as, as if the dry brushing sort of missed some spots, but it kind of adds to the more kind of aged look that the metal is. So I kind of think that that is not necessarily deliberate for the fact that that piston got missed, but for the fact that all the rest of it doesn't get a complete silver treatment anyways. Oh, this one's this one this section here is really really tight. Um, if not for that, it uh, it does look good. Again, I'll show you how that goes into his hand in a second. The other thing it comes included with is this spike, which I guess in your imagination, you could really make this into anything. This could also be a missile that could fire out from his arm. According to the packaging, though, it is a, it is a spike, a spike of which I just dropped. Hold on one second. 
certainly bound to happen. The floor has claimed yet another accessory. I wonder how many things are down. I should keep it like a little tally a little on the side of the screen, keeping track of how many things I actually drop over the course of these reviews. Once again, though, it does look like the spike or missile, if you want to use your imagination. Looks like it was cast in black plastic, dry brushed very generously with the silver paint, and it does look very good. Put that right over there. If the cybernetic arm is not really your thing, and you want really just a more traditional Terminator arm, uh, you can swap it out for this more human arm. The joint is, I will tell you, extremely stiff, primarily because of the fact that they put so much paint around the joint. <laughs> there goes the other arm. I don't need to pause that for, there we go, there we go. I'm all thumbs today in this review. Uh, but yeah, the paint is very caked on there. Almost to the point where you maybe want to move this around considerably before you start putting it into the socket of the torso. Just because uh, once it is in there, you don't want to have to fight with the joint. And as you can see, there is a fair bit of paint that's been kind of gooped and covered around that peg point there. Ironically, also this is the arm that has a watch. So if Terminator wants to keep track of time, this is the hand that would want to do that. So those are your accessories that come included with the figure. Now let's have a look at the figure itself. One thing I can show you, because I know I am going to forget about it, is show you how the accessories can be attached. So we take the handle portion, and we just fit that in between his thumb and his finger. You can see also that the pointer finger actually does a good job of fitting around the trigger. So if you actually want it to look as if it's holding the plasma uh, pl phased plasma rifle. You can certainly do that as well. It does look good, obviously, in his in his arm, being that this is such a busy arm on the other side. It's nice that this arm gets a little bit of attention via this added accessory. Just take that out of his arm. You kind of have to be careful when you are taking it out that it doesn't get hooked around that little pointer finger. Put that to the side. And then also, just to show you how those accessories come into play for the cybernetic arm, We'll first take the spike, and that just kind of fits in place. I will say, though, that the spike, I'm just going to move the arm up here for a second. The spike, as well as the claw, don't sit very snug in place. I guess they did this as the means that if you did put this into place, you wouldn't want to have to then fight, put a lot of pressure to try to pull this out, nor would you want the same type of pressure to force it into that hole. As a result, they've made it rel relatively loose. So loose, in fact, that if you tip it upside down, this would be ideally the time where it would want to fall out. It would fall out, even though it didn't do it right there. To also show you how it looks with the claw, we'll switch it around to his other side. And once again, the claw fits into place. It's loose enough that you can also spin the claw, but again, it doesn't stay very well in place. It's very, very loose. I'm trying to think to myself how they could have fixed this, remedied for the fact that the claw, as well as the spike, sit so loose inside. But again, I really can't think of how else they could have gone about doing this. As you will see, as we talk a little bit about this arm that has given me some problems, realizing the problems now when I'm shooting this review, I understand why this had to be so loose. Again, you don't want to apply, apply a lot of pressure to pop that in nor do you want to use as much effort to pull it back out. So it's probably why they kept the peg very, very loose on this. And I guess providing that you have the arm upright and you don't have the arm straight down, all the accessories, both the accessories, should stay relatively in place. We'll take this out. We'll put this to the side. Now, before we talk a little bit about this figure, I want to talk about a little bit of a sad story. Don't worry, it doesn't involve animals. I hate hearing stories about animals. It deals primarily and solely with this arm. I will tell you well in advance that I've had to glue this arm in place. A cautionary tale, I'm sure this review will end up playing out for you. Well, remember when we were talking a little bit about the screws and how tight those were, being that they are screwed into place? Unfortunately, the arm is the exact same thing. There's a screw right there that attaches this part to this part right here. When you do get it out of packaging, 
you may want to hold the top part of the arm when you are bending things like the elbow joint or where the elbow joint would actually sit if this was a human arm. Unfortunately though, I'll tell you right off the bat, this area right up here broke right off the figure. Very easily also I might add. He does have a hinge joint here and the arm does move back and forth fairly easy. You don't have any real problems moving the arm. What you will have problems with, and this is again a cautionary tale, something you may want to look out for when you get this figure for yourself, is right in here, you'll see right this part right here sticks out and this part kind of bends in. But you'll see neither of which actually attach to this part here, this circular section of his shoulder. The only part that attaches to this is a small circular peg. I, I would even say, you know what, that's a good example. The peg is about the exact same diameter and size as this peg right here. And it sits right connecting this piece to this piece here. I would assume it allowed for the elbow for this part here to swivel, for this arm to swivel back and forth like this. Unfortunately though, it's such a small peg that if you take the arm, as I did, and you move the arm forward or back, or if you move the arm out, because this actually does have a hinge, but if you put all the pressure here when you're moving the arm, that peg isn't strong enough. It breaked, it broke right off. So what I would say is when you do pick up this figure for yourself, if you haven't moved the arm yet, and if you haven't had the unfortunate task of having to glue it in place like I did, when you are moving the arm, move it from the shoulder. Move it from the shoulder and don't move it from here. If this is too stiff, if this doesn't want to freely move on its own, the moment you move the arm back and forth, you're going to break that peg right there. The same thing too when you are bending the arm because they are making use of, once again, a little screw. It makes this very tight and bending it right away, you will probably not notice there's a lot of forgiveness. So when you bend the arm, once again, if you bend it from here and not here, you're immediately putting pressure on that little tiny peg. Here's that little tiny peg right there. I think it even is smaller than that, smaller than this. That's the only thing that attaches this whole arm to the shoulder area of his arm. That part right there, and I had to glue it. I think I may have unfortunately forfeited the idea that I could swivel the arm. I couldn't even tell you whether the arm could swivel on this, because unfortunately the arm had already broken, and I had to glue it before I could find out whether it would swivel. Based on the way it looked, it looked like it would allow you to swivel the arm back and forth, but again, I never got to that point. So, I will say this again, if you guys do pick up this figure for yourself, do all the moving here in the shoulder, and when you do decide you want to bend the elbow, uh, hold the arm, kind of hold it here, and hold it here, and very, very carefully bend it. You may also even want to go in there and loosen the screw a little bit, because I didn't realize, again, how tight that was. It immediately, just like that, in a few seconds, broke right off, had to glue it in place. So that's a bit sad. I guess some lesson can be learned and my unfortunate dealings with this arm can hopefully teach others, share it with the rest of the village, that you have to be careful when you get this out of packaging. Don't immediately start bending the arm further down, bend it way up at the top there. Spend a lot of time, I know, I apologize, spend a lot of time talking about that. As for this figure, boy, oh boy, Oh boy, do I like this figure. Now, I may be slightly biased because I initially owned this figure as a kid, long time ago. Unfortunately, I have sold it. Sold it probably at a garage sale still when I was young because I had, of course, that mindset. I don't need this anymore. I want to move on to other things. I want to collect other things. And ultimately, I sold a lot of my Kenner stuff primarily also this guy here, which unfortunately I wish I could have had him still to do the comparisons. And ultimately, really, it boils down to I really love that toy as well. 
never kept it. So sad. Uh, this figure really is a, gr a great upgrade to that initial figure that we had before. Now the head sculpt, I'm certain along the ways NECA has used this head sculpt before. That slightly, slightly he says, that worn away half side exposing the endoskeleton head. And of course Arnie's head on the other side there with the bullets and just a little damage and stuff like that on his face. The face sculpt is very good. The head, the head sculpt I'm sure was used before. And even then when we looked at this head sculpt initially, if that be the case, I really like the head sculpt then. I really like it still now. It does have a little bit of paint, unfortunately, on the forehead, which doesn't look like it has been finished, or it looks like it's gotten scuffed off. It's unfortunate, but again, the rest of the figure, it does kind of add to the fact that it does look like it's not, it's not an actual real skin. Well, it is a tissue, a living tissue, but it does look like there's a little bit of scuffing, unfortunately, on the side. The blood that's been applied very generously around the exposed area of the endoskeleton head looks very good. I don't even remember the figure having exposed endo chin, but yet, yet this figure does have it down below. Of course, he's got his, his grenade strap, the strap that goes across his shoulder here. And one thing for the Kenner line of figures, this particular Predator, or Terminator, the Power Arm Terminator had the pink interior t-shirt. Luckily, NECA has recreated that when they've released this guy in the upgraded, more articulated version. Uh, it's rather not offsetting, but you certainly don't expect to see a sleeveless leather jacket. And yet Arnie is sporting bare arms here, very veiny arms. You can see he does have the human arms on the one side. The other arm, as we've extensively covered is really really neat it is neat unfortunately a little again on the fragile side cast again it looks like in black plastic brushed generously with silver paint of course you got the opening on the end that we've already talked about does hold the various different accessories depending on how you want to have them displayed likely i think i'll gravitate more towards the claw hand myself because i just think it's a little bit cooler than the spiked hand or the spiked portion of the arm. All the pistons it does also look like it's got a clip underneath so maybe there's some firepower that can come out from this as well. It's kind of like the Swiss Army of Arms. Swiss Army knife at least of arms. On the back riddled once again with bullets making, making use of previous figures that we had gotten before. The strap is a little on the warped side. There we go. He's got rather re regular leather pants. As you can see, we've gotten these as also as well. And you've got the cowboy boots down below. Just to show you also as well, if you do want to display the figure in more dynamic of poses, he does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Luckily, the figure does stand well, despite for the fact that his arm, you would think, would throw off his balance. Once you get his feet, though, firmly planted, the figure doesn't have any problem whatsoever standing straight up. And if you did want to go back and discuss further the interchangeable arm option, to change out the arm, uh, not something I like doing, but you grab onto the torso. I'm going to grab it up here. Once again, when you are pulling it, make sure you're not pulling it here. This is where breakage is going to happen again. So take it from the shoulder wiggle it off and you'd be surprised how much there's all of it right there how much actually comes off when you take the arm I guess that I was thinking the peg was going to be here but I guess they have to factor in that the joint this for this to be posable be just a smarter route especially this is going to have to stick further out from his arm anyways if this was gone the arm would be way in there and you wouldn't be able to move it as much would take the human arm and we just pop that into place. It does look okay. I mean, sleeveless leather jacket clad Arnie does look okay with the human arms, but it does look like it looks like he deliberately cut the sleeves off his leather jacket and wanted to expose his new pipes, the the gun show, if you will, that he's been working so diligently on. Once again, you've got the watch down below. I'm sure this has been used before, probably from like Dutch. I'm not 100% certain, but I have to go back and probably have a look at that. 
Uh, defaulted though, I would be likely inclined, very, very likely inclined to go back to the mechanized arm myself. And once again, when you are putting it back in place, this is a little bit more trickier because this moves freely while you are trying to put pressure in, into the socket area. Just kind of keep wiggling it around. Eventually it does find its home and then you've got the arm back in place. This is a figure that I'm sure in final looks I'll talk a little bit more about. It's a figure that once NECA had acquired the Terminator property, deep down inside I always kind of hoped to myself, secretly, not wanting to share this with others of course, secretly I always hoped that they could eventually acquire like the Kenner lineup, which I'm sure as you pick up one license, it may very well cover everything, but I'm sure Kenner had exclusive designs, obviously designs like this that never made its way into the film, that Necker maybe didn't have the rights for right away. Or either that or they had to gauge the demand of this line. If the figures seem to have a popular interest by collectors, then toy companies like Necker would venture off and expand out on that line. Sooner or later, I would hope, though, that we would have eventually gotten ourselves the Power Arm Terminator. Now we do, and boy, is it ever a sight to see. Even though this isn't something that is canon to the films, it is certainly one of my favorite Terminator pieces now to add to my collection. As we wrap up this review, I really forgot to cover off his articulation, so let's have a look at that right now. Arnie's head, the Terminator's head, does have a ball joint. In fact, there's the ball joint right there. The neck, I don't think at any point the Terminator heads were separate pieces from the rest of their necks. The neck always seemed to be sculpted into their head. So when you are moving the head, the neck is part of the head and it just sits on that ball joint we had already discussed. The arms hinge out, at least this arm hinges out and rotates all the way around. It does have also a hinge in the elbow. There it is right there. Rotates all the way around and the hands rotate all the way around. They also hinge back and forth. The torso does have, not necessarily I would say a ball joint, but it does swivel back and forth. Then we look at this arm right here, pending of course for the fact that, it's including the fact that I've had to glue the arm in place. The arm rotates all the way around. It hinges back and forth. I do believe this could have been a swivel at one point, but unfortunately no longer the case on my figure. The elbow does hinge back and forth. You gotta be very, very careful with it. It hinges to about, to about there. It's almost a 90 degree angle. Uh, the legs split, they go forward, they go back. It has a swivel essentially where it attaches via the ball joint. Uh, there is a three quarter or about a th third of the way cut swivel in the thigh area there. It's bend at the knee, which also allows the lower leg to rotate. The boot also rotates. The feet rotate all the way around, hinging up and down, left and right. And there's the posability. And like I said, the very cool, yet sadly a little fragile on the one arm. This is the Power Arm Terminator. Again, something that I owned as a kid, kind of still wish I could have held on to it, but now I can kind of relive my childhood experience of enjoying the Terminator toys from Kenner, from the folks over at NECA, who have sort of given this a fresh coat of paint, but still being very pure and traditional to the original toys that these were inspired from. I'm sad that the arm had to break the way that it did, but then I think to myself, well, if this prevents other people, viewers of this channel, from having their arms break, maybe it's not for nothing. Maybe the sacrifice of the hinge, and I think it was a hinge in the arm, maybe was for nothing, or maybe it wasn't for nothing. At the end of the day, cosmetically, it didn't affect the arm at all. If it turns out that that swivel point was a swivel, and not simply just the way it was attached to the arm, then it's not really losing a whole lot. It's a shame, again, that it had to break the way that it did, but a little bit of glue, it's almost as good as new. It still is a working functional arm that still is able to bend at the elbow or around the elbow area, if that was his elbow, which it isn't. Uh, as for the accessories, it doesn't come with a lot. Granted, yes, it does come with the rifle, the phased plasma rifle. I always want to keep forgetting the phased parts. It does come with the plasma rifle and it comes with 
like I said, the accessories that even Trapjaw would be envious of. It does come with two, and unfortunately, they don't sit well into the socket area at the very end of the cannon arm. Again, I guess this was deliberate by NECA so that you didn't have to force and fight to get it back out of place, especially like the claw part of the arm. Being that that would be something that's a little bit more fragile, you certainly wouldn't want that breaking as the top of the arm, unfortunately, had to break for me. Still love this figure. I still kind of wish, looking at it now, that I still had my original Kenner figure, at the very least, so I could have done a comparison side by side with that one and the new one here from NECA Toys. It is pretty uncanny for how close they were able to recreate this figure. Now, again, you get all the benefits of the way how cool the Kenner figure looked back in the day, just with much needed posability and an enhanced sculpt. Today, we were having a look, though, at the new lineup of NECA Terminator 2 figures, and this was the Power Arm Terminator, which by the way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find it now at local comic book stores and retail stores. If, if, and I hate to ask this of the people that are watching, but if you did manage to pick up this figure for yourself and you're willing to admit it, let me know down below if you had any problems with the arm. Did it break in the same place as mine? Curious to know if it affected other people or if it was just Butterfingers here. Also, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. We're going to have a look at the other Terminator 2 Judgment Day figures in upcoming reviews. So hope you guys will stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.